Welcome to the Smile Sisters podcast, powered by the LA Dental Clinic. In each episode of the Smile Sisters, host Dr. Ozzy and Dr. Arizu Nasiri show you how you can transform and maintain your smile. The sisters explain everything you need to know about your mouth and why keeping it healthy is key to your overall health. Okay, hello, welcome back to Smile Sisters podcast. So today I wanted to talk about something that we call standard of care. It's kind of like a vague idea of what is a proper thing to do in dentistry. But first, I have good news. We got a shout out from one of our patients. Yes, we did. Who does a podcast, um, Haley, and she has a podcast called Ruined. So thank you so much for mentioning us. And um, we, we were so excited. We're like famous or something. <laughs> so H- Haley came in and she was having some pain and she was a bit anxious, right? And yeah. so we did some treatment for her. And I saw her, you saw her, and one of our associates saw yeah. her as well in the office. So it was so really great. It was great to get that shout out. Those things that really are big for us because we don't know. We're just like trudging along here. But, you know, she mentioned how we are a women-led practice and we, you know, have a lot of women in our practice that work for us, very competent, amazing women. Yes, um, And so do. we try to push that and encourage them. You know, we have team meetings where we're trying to encourage our team to be, you know, more self-sufficient, to work towards their personal goals as well as the, their goals in the office. So it's really nice when somebody comes in and kind of Kind of notices that, that yeah. yeah so that was cool. that was really cool, I thought. So too. that was cool. So thank you, Haley. Yeah, thank you. So back to the standard of care thing. So I went to Guatemala a couple of weeks ago for a volunteer trip. So it was about 20 doctors, nurses, occupational therapists, dentists, hygienists. So a big group, a team. And we all go to Guatemala. Yeah. We have to literally bring everything, like cotton rolls, anesthetic, instruments. Everything you need to do your treatment. Yeah. And yeah. we and we were in a town that's um, called San Felipe, which is about five, six hours outside of the capital. So kind of a remote area. And we were in this kind of like school building. So no dental chairs, mm-hmm. like basically just like a classroom type setting. Yeah. Um, working on a one of these fold-out tables, you know, so people would just lay down on the table and then I would just look and like all we could do was take teeth out. That's it. We were just doing extractions. So minimal facilities here. Almost no, faci- well, no facilities, um, yeah. just making up whatever and no x-rays, no suction. And these things are important when you're doing dentistry, especially if you're trying to pull a tooth, <laughs> having an x-ray to know where the roots well, are. That's well, that's what I want to talk about because dentistry is one of the oldest healthcare kind of like branches, I would say. Like it started out as because you have a toothache and barbers were taking teeth out, right? Mm-hmm. So there's no x-ray really needed. Like that's what I want to kind of like discuss. Like what is actually needed? What is actually the absolute basic necessity to do dentistry and how we have added so many layers to that here in the U.S. And it's all good. And there are reasons why we've added these layers. But in actuality, what you absolutely need to take a tooth out is almost like nothing. You know, you don't need that much. Like, for example, you don't need x-rays. I can take a tooth out without an x-ray. I mean, maybe I'll leave a piece in there and I won't know. But right. I could do it. <laughs> but I could do it. I could get you out of pain, you know? Or, for example, suction. Like, people were just, like, spitting or whatever. Like, you don't have to have all this, like, plumbing and suction. And um, and then apart from that, there was the whole aspect of sterilization, which we didn't have any sterilizer. So we were using cold sterilization, which is basically, like, dipping the instruments in, in, a, solution in a solution for a while. For, yeah, for like an extended period of time. But we had no way to test to see if it was actually sterile or not. I mean, that part of it is was a little bit like, oh my God, like what am I doing here? But I think maybe in the US we've swung a little bit too far on the complexity of things. And not that we should go to Guatemala standards, but 
I think healthcare costs would come down if we didn't have all these other layers added. Like that's kind of where I wanted to mm. to discuss. So well, I think that you know, from a practice owning perspective, there's a lot of hoops to jump through there are. to meet standards, which adds a lot of cost a to lot. care. Yes, because to meet all of these standards requires constant. Vigilance, evaluation, upgrades, repairs, you know, yes. staffing and things like that. What bothers me about healthcare is that if you have a toothache and you go to a hospital, the, the people in the hospital cannot actually do anything for you. They'll give you medication. Yeah. But there isn't a person there who can just take your tooth out. And it's all because of these standards of care mm -hmm. that we've created here because Oh, like a person who's licensed and blah, 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 cannot do this. And they need to have like this piece of equipment and this piece of equipment and, you know, be licensed in this and this and this. And, you know, barbers were taking teeth out. It's not that complicated of a thing to do in actuality. And you don't need that much. Like what we had in Guatemala was like literally just a few instruments, no x-ray, nothing, you know. Um, so I think... Like, I would like to see a world where you can just walk into a hospital and have your tooth taken out. And you, there's no repercussions past that. But what's happening is that if someone at a hospital takes your tooth out and doesn't inform you that, oh, you might lose bone, your other teeth might move. There's so many things that you have to like, like to get a tooth out at our office, you literally have to sign a booklet of forms. <laughs> well, that goes into the whole idea of, you know, litigation and what's going on exactly and fear. everything is fear-based it's the same in medicine you go yeah. in for something that hurts and they do all kinds of scans and this and that and it's just because everyone's yeah just trying to be super careful super careful yeah. and because you're always afraid like well if this happens then I you know you didn't tell me that this could happen or you didn't tell me like if I take this tooth out then the other tooth could move I didn't know about that and it's just like all this like crazy stuff that we have to kind of meet and then tell you about. We basically have to like almost educate you in dentistry before we do anything to you. Yes. And it's really hard, you know, it's a lot. And then the costs just add up. Yeah. And then you want to get a tooth taken out. You have a toothache and you go to the hospital. They can't do it. You have to find a dentist. It costs like hundreds or thousands of dollars. Yes. Whereas, you know, you're in Guatemala, you show up to a free clinic and somebody just takes it out for you, you know? Well, there's a lot of repercussions to that as well. And there's reasons why all these measures are in. But of course, it causes us to stumble. Yeah. It becomes expensive. But, you know, I'm always counseling patients that come in that haven't been to the dentist for a long time or someone comes in as a new patient and they've been hopping around from practice to practice. Yes. And I tell them, you know, you need to find a partner in your dental health care. Right. Because those things then can be conversations that are had over time, you know. Yeah. And that really helps in that sense. And in, in reality, we're not going to be able to teach you everything that could happen. In that one visit in, in your exam. Like, it's impossible. Yeah. Like, we went to school for years. We've been doing this for years. At some point, there has to be that level of trust that, okay, they're doing the best they can. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, I feel like that's kind of like lacking in the U.S. because now we've replaced that trust with a bunch of papers that you have to sign. But those papers do not replace that, I think. They don't. Exactly. So finding a provider that cares about you, that you care about going to, that you can develop a relationship yeah. with so you can have these conversations over periods of time, right. you know, and you discover things um, that that might actually help just in having conversations over right. time and they know your history. So I think that becomes important. Yeah. Well. But also, I think it would be nice if we decrease some of these barriers so that just bare minimum dentistry. Now, I'm not talking implants or veneers but if you have a toothache like that should be something that in the u.s as a country we should be able to deal with in a hospital mm -hmm. like you walk into a hospital there's a dentist there and they just take your tooth out and you don't have to worry i mean you don't have to like worry about getting sued or did they understand that this that this that this like this is like the most basic thing that was dealt with 
you know, thousands of years ago at a barber shop. And yeah. now we've complicated it to an extent where people are walking around with toothaches and they're going to hospitals and just getting medicated for it. Yeah, but it, it speaks to the kind of issue with healthcare in general as well. Yeah, it does. But anyways, it was a it was a good experience to go to Guatemala and um, yeah, so all these issues to to think about. But overall, I'm grateful we're in the U.S. I'm grateful for what we have. Right. Um, you see the lack over there. Yeah, it was it's rough. It's rough. and it was hard on you. The number of hours, the way you had to yeah. work over. Yeah. So it's hard on the providers no, also that it, try to take overall, care of these patients. Overall, I feel like we are amazing but there are just little tweaks and improvements that we can make. Okay. Yeah. So find a good dentist and have a relationship and have your teeth out by a provider that you trust and stay with them. <laughs> yes. That's the answer. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. See you Bye. next time. Thank you for listening to The Smile Sisters. If you found this episode helpful, subscribe and leave us a review. To book a free consultation, go to ladentalclinic.com.